Hello, this is Deb, Debra, Science Knitster. Um, this is a YouTube channel about, <clears throat> mainly about cross stitch, um, but I also do other crafts and um, like knitting, um, quilting and so forth. And there'll be a little bit of that near the end. Um, I'm also a biologist. And so sometimes I like to talk a little science. Um, and since we're in the midst of bird migration, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the birds we've been seeing here where I live in Corpus Christi, Texas. So normally, um, if you're a returning, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm recovering from COVID. I avoided it for three years and finally the end of April, um, it got me. And um, <clears throat> I thought I was pretty much over the cough and that would be safe to try to do this, but um, I seem to have a little cough tonight. Anyway, um, so normally, um, I start off with what I am drinking, and tonight I'm finishing up some Lambrusco um, that I had with tonight's dinner, which was Italian. A little meat sauce on some penne with a little uh, shredded Romano and basil on top. Um, anyway, uh, for those of you that are returning viewers, I'm sorry it has been so long. Um, it's as you may remember, I started a new job in January and it was, it's been a little more hectic than I planned. And then as I mentioned, I got COVID near the end of the semester. Um, the semester's over now. Uh, my only last official duty is to attend graduation tomorrow night. Um, but anyway, I thought I'd record tonight um, because my spouse who's a flower farmer and he also grows some vegetables um, has a market uh, farmer's market tonight. He sells at local farmer's market and he has market tonight. So I thought it would be nice and quiet in the house. Uh, but then my neighbors started doing yard work. <laughs> so hopefully they're done. It's been quiet for like the last five minutes. So I'm hoping they're done and we'll be able to get through this without interruption. And hopefully before the sun goes down and it gets too dark in here. Okay. So um, for those of you that are new, welcome. And as I said, for those of you returning, also welcome or welcome back. So I thought I'd start off with a finish with finishes because I have a lot of finishes. Um, <clears throat> so my last video, I mentioned that I had finished a piece by um, the Blue Flower from the Jingle Ball. And now I have forgotten the name of the piece, but here it is. Um, I stitched it on some Ada that I found in my stash and I used whatever colors um, I thought would work. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna make this into an ornament or a pillow. It'd be, well, I have ornaments that are at least this big. So, oh, unfortunately it sounds like my neighbor is not done with his yard work. So hopefully it won't be too loud. Okay, so this was actually a finish from last time. Um, <clears throat> then, Let's just say I fell down the rabbit hole of stitching small hat samplers. And the one that got me started was, I think it was this one, um, Dorchy Sampson. I may have showed this in my last video. I finished it the day of my last video and I can't remember if I had um, shown it finished or almost finished. So you might notice that it doesn't say Dorchy <laughs> here. Um, and that's because I personalized it in honor of my um, paternal grandmother. Um, this is her birthday. Um, so it's in honor of my paternal grandmother who taught me how to embroider when I was six or seven. Um, the other personalization I did is um, there's supposed to be dogs on both sides and I made the dogs over here. I tried to make them look like cats. So looks like I need to bring more light in here if I'm gonna stitch in the evening. But anyway, um, this is a very colorful sampler. Oh, there we go. I stitched it on 36 count, um, one over two. This is just a 36 count um, fabric that I had in my stash. Okay, so that was finish number one for the year. And then, um, Let's see. Yes, yeah, so that was finished in January. So that was 
part of a, a bunch of people in the Our Sampler Years book uh, Facebook group decided to do this as a blessing sampler. Um, so a blessing sampler is a sampler that you start um, the 1st of January and finish by the end of the month. Um, and then it brings you blessings. So hopefully this brought me some blessings. Um, and then I think my next finish, so that was a, a start and a finish in January. And then I have a new start in February, which was um, Mary Ann Priest. And this was another one that was part of a sal, um, a sort of a February challenge that Melissa Sampler Net and I think it's Vicki Noel um, had decided to do. It's, it's on the same 36 count fabric. Uh, I did both Dorchi and this one in DMC. Um, this one I did not finish until March because I also started in February. Hold on, hold on to your hats. I also started in February, Florence Law. This one I stitched on, oh shoot, um, I think it's an antique ivory. Where's my phone? I'll look in my X-Stitch app. I think it's um, Zweigart Antique Ivory. Yes, Swigart Antique Ivory, um, Antique Red, and I'm using um, Vicki Clayton Hand Dyed Fiber um, Red Work Red, um, which I bought a lot of, thanks to Happy Bella Stitch. But, um, again, I personalized this one. I've decided that um, for the most part from now on, I will probably personalize samplers in some way or just leave the name off. Um, so, so this one I personalized, um, but hope you can see that. And I forgot to bring something to put behind here, but I think you can see that okay. okay. So I finished that one. I think I finished both of these in, in early March. Yes, so I, oh, actually, I think I didn't finish Marianne Priest until April. Um, so I finished this one in early March. Um, and then I started and finished in March. It was a, another challenge. This was sort of a luck of the Irish challenge. I think it was, um, again, by Melissa Sampler Nut and Vicki Noel, I think. I'm not sure. I don't remember who started it. But this is Elizabeth Garrod. Um, and this one I personalized for my great, great grandmother on my father's side, um, who was born in Longford in Ireland in 1848. I could not find her birth date anywhere. I even joined Ancestry.com to to try to find out more information about her, but that's all I could find. Um, but that's another Hands Across the Sea samplers. This was also on the Antique Ivory, and I stitched this one with Vicki Clayton Hand Dyed Fiber. Oh, let's see. So this was Elizabeth Garod, or Garod. I'm not sure how to say that. I think it's Garod. Flapper of Fact is what I stitched this one with. So it's a nice green. There. So then in April, I finished the one that I started in February, Mary Ann Priest. Because so I stitched those other two. So, so far, I have one small hat sampler, hands across the sea sampler um, for each month so far this year. So wait till you see starts. <laughs> um, okay. Then my next finish, end of April, 
was Personal is Political. So this is the original by Michelle Bendy Stitchy. So I started this in 2020. And all I had left were some of the over one here and the personalization right there. And it, not very little. I could have finished this last summer. I do not know why I didn't. Well, yes, I do, because I don't like stitching over one on linen. I don't mind on even, even weave, but um, at least not this linen, 28 count. Picture this plus. Um, it's very uneven and it's a pain in you know what to stitch over one, at least for me. So here it is. I stitched this on 28 count. Picture this plus Arbor. Um, and I did my own over dye conversion. Um, some of these are DMC, but like the pinks and so forth are um, my own conversion. Um, if you're interested, contact me. I can tell you what I did, but um, there we go. That's even better. Okay, so those are all my finishes. Um, and so, and I have a bunch of starts also. I seem to be starting all the things. Um, so that, that last one is actually on um, my, what's called magic list. And I forget what magic stands for. But um, I belong to two guilds, the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild and the um, Embroiders Guild of America Tip of Texas chapter, which uh, meets down in Harlingen, Texas, um, near where I used to live, down in the valley. Um, <clears throat> and um, both of them this year, um, Tudor Rose has been doing it for a while, but this year um, Tip of Texas decided to do a magic list, and that one's on both of my magic lists. It's the only thing, only whip that I have finished this year. We'll see if I get any others done because I seem to be, like I said, on this kick of stitching small hat samplers. So, um, so most of my starts this year I've already finished, but I do have a, a few. Um, so in, yeah, so my January 1st start I've already shown, um, I might as well just show it again. I, I think I've only worked on it once since, is it, no, that's the one I'm working on now. Well, I thought I had it here. Oh, it's on, in my, it's in my whip pile, not my start pile. <laughs> it's in the wrong pile. Probably because I showed it previously. So, um. So this is the R Sampler Years um, Stitch Along this year, Florence Mary Dickinson. Um, it was a exclusive from Hobby House. I'm not sure if they still have any copies or not. I'm stitching mine on 40 Count Vintage Country Mocha. And what am I doing? I am, oh, this one. I am doing my own over dye conversion. I've actually started this one twice because I started it up here and I didn't like the color that I had chose. So I started over <laughs> down here. Um, so I just turned it over and started over. So that's all I have done so far. I think since my last floss tube, maybe I put in this flower. I can't remember. So I haven't completed the conversion yet. Um, I had just converted, um, I think the colors I needed for the January assignment. And then of course I haven't done anything since. So I have no idea when I'll get back to this one. It is pretty. You never know. I've been in a stitch what you want, when you want kind of mood lately. So you just never know what's gonna end up in my hands. And there's been, um, times when I just haven't had much time to stitch. So, oops, I need a Brenda to put my stuff back in. Okay, so um, that was 
my January new start. I already showed you Dorchi and Florence. And then Marianne. Okay. In February, in honor of Brenda Sampler Stitcher's 60th birthday, I started on her birthday because I was busy stitching Marianne Priest and Florence Law. I started Martha Evans. Um, I can't remember, did I say, I'm stitching Florence Mary Dickinson on 40 Count Vintage Country Mocha by Zweiger. Um, this one, I am using the DMC and I don't have them organized so I won't show them to you, but I'm stitching it on 40 Count, <coughs> excuse me. This is why I waited until the middle of May to, to film, record, whatever. I'm showing my age. Um, okay, so this is 40 Count Buxton by Mountaineer. And I forgot, this is all I done. I started the border. That's all I got done. And I haven't worked on it since. It's a beautiful sampler. There are people that have finished it already. Um, and I will get back to it at some point, but because um, it is a beautiful sampler. Here it is again. Um, so, so I've just done a little bit up here. But I'm just using the DMC, just. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it will be beautiful. I've been mainly stitching with DMC. Um, I had thought about um, doing a conversion for some of the small hats, um, Dorchi and for Marianne, but I decided since my bigger ones, um, I'm still working on the conversions. And then, um, I don't have a local needle workshop anymore um, because my local needle workshop, uh, Judy Stitchery Nook, closed um, like in October. And so the closest shop, I think, is probably San Antonio, um, which was farther away when I lived in the valley. It's, it's kind of equidistant. It depends on where in San Antonio it is, and I'm not sure where it is because it's a relatively new shop. Okay, any other... Oh yes, I had a new start in March. Was feeling kind of down and decided I needed something colorful. Oops, where did you go? Oh, here you are. Oh, mm. let me see. I might have a picture of the actual item in my not sure that I do. This was on um, positivity. positivity. Oh, here it is. Yes, I do have a picture. So this is this is by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. It was a, a stitch along in 2020, I think. Um, Lady Wing Designs had talked about it on her floss tube and so I joined in but never started um, so I'm using it's all DMC and I am using um, 28 count sprite by picture this plus oops a loose thread there so I'm using the called for DMC and um, instead of stitching on white I had this sprite in my because I think theirs is on white um, Ada, um, which I had and could have done, but I thought this purple would look. So I was a little worried about the light, um, the lavender, but um, even down here where it's, it doesn't have gray around it, it seems to be working out just fine. So, so these, I'm, this one I'm stitching two over two with, as I said, with the DMC that's called for in the chart. And I've got loose thread all over the place. I don't have a thread bed for this one, I guess. No, I don't. So I used up all the ones my friend Susan made for me. Um, okay, that goes back there. So that was another new start. That was in March. Let's see. In April, in addition, so I finished Mary Ann Priest. I finished Personal as Political. 
I had a couple of new starts. Um, on April 1st, I started the Blue Flowers Tudor B. Um, <clears throat> so the original design for this was designed for the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild, but that was before I joined. Um, and so I didn't, um, I wasn't able to get a copy of this until it was available. Um, and I bought, I think I bought this one from Judy. I asked her to get it for me. Um, and so I'm stitching mine on, you shoot. Oh, this is Lakeside. So I'm 40 count Lakeside Pearled Barley. Here's my working copy. I've actually got quite a bit done. Um, as you can see, I don't iron my stuff before I do this. If I waited to iron, I would never ever record. <laughs> um, so I'm using the called for DMC. And I would like to finish this. I'm probably going to finish it as a pillow like in the in the picture. Um, oh, that's where that is. My other pair of glasses and a thread bed. And I have my thread somewhat organized. Um, so this was started as a um, stitch along for the Tudor Rose Guild. Um, some people, I can't remember if anybody's finished those or not. Probably. Um, oops, did it again. Forgot to put the chart back in. Um, so I'd like to finish that. I was hoping to finish it this month, but I haven't worked on it at all this month because I've been working on something else that I haven't shown you yet. Um, and then another, I may try to get this started. I was finished off um, soon. So I went to get this one finished before the, e the Easter, the religious season is over when it ends, oh, it ends this Saturday or Sunday with Pentecost. No, next next week, sorry. Next week with Pentecost. Yeah, I looked up the date of Pentecost and I can't remember. Anyway, it's the Trilogy Easter Treat. This is from, what year was this? Doesn't have a year that I can see easily. So the Trilogy <clears throat> is Heart and Hand, Twisted Threads, and Bent Creek. And this was a kit, um, and I'm not going to show you the threads because they're in little packets. And I just dropped one. Pardon me, because if I don't pick it up now, it'll get lost. And I'll be sad, although I do have more of this. Okay, so this is on <clears throat> 32 Count Summer Khaki, Belfast Linen by Zweigart. So I'm using the stuff from the kit. I haven't worked on this in a couple of weeks because I've been rather consumed by something I'm going to show you in a minute. So there it is. I probably could finish this in a weekend if I put my mind to it. Let's see. I should just finish it this weekend. I think this one, it's in a frame in the picture but um it's not gonna be that big so i think i'm gonna do this one as a pillow i've been thinking about <clears throat> doing some pillow finishes and i have a nice cherry wood bowl and then it's also some ceram beautiful ceramic bowls um that are supposed to be for knitting <laughs> that um I instead used to display things. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So. I finished Mary Ann Priest on the 28th of 
of April. Um, I finally was, I couldn't stitch for several days because <clears throat> um, it was right at the end of April. Um, April 23rd, I think I woke up and I was like, I think I might have COVID, but I don't want to admit it. And then I went and got a test on Monday and yeah. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so um, I didn't feel well enough to do any stitching for a couple days and I also didn't want to cough COVID virus all over my stitching stuff. <laughs> um, and so I didn't finish Marianne until the 28th. And then on the 29th, I decided um, I was going to wait until May 1st, but I couldn't wait. I wanted to start. So this one I have as a PDF. So let me show you on my Kindle. Okay, so where are you? So I've been eyeing this one, Jane Hardy, 1840. So this is a hats sampler, hands across the sea sampler. I've been eyeing it since it came out in either 2020 or 2021. It's a little gem um, and I hadn't even bought it. I don't know why, because I was at one point I was buying all the little gems and I guess at some point I just stopped. This might have come out in 2021 or even 2022. Um, <clears throat> I forget. Um, so anyway, I decided that was going to be my next small sampler because I thought I could finish it in a month. So I'm using the DMC. I just pulled them out of my stash. I didn't even put them on nice rings or anything. And I'm stitching this on 40 count Fox and Rabbit Ballet Slipper. Um, I thought the fox and rabbit felt a, a little rough and stiff compared to um, the other thing I was stitching on, but um, it has softened up a lot. I stitch in hand most of the time because um, in order to save my right wrist, which I have to use a lot for work because I'm on the computer all the time, um, and so I can knit, <laughs> I, um, I started stitching with my left hand because um, I used to use both hands and, um, and so anyway so this is my progress I'm almost done with the main part of the border on the bottom um, I really didn't want to have all the border to do when I was done so what I've started doing is I'll do a length of floss on the border and then I'll um, do something either on the house or mainly mainly on the house like I'll do a, a length of floss on the roof or I'll um so I started filling in the steps down here so I had the there's a little bit of the same color I really need to do something about the lighting if I'm gonna do this in the evening um, it's the same color as the window panes and um, on the stairs there, just a little bit. And so I used the rest and finished this and then just did another length down here. Um, and then I think I might do another length here or put in a chimney or birds or something, a motif. I started working on the, um, that's gonna be a tree. I um, discovered after I put, I think it was this thing in, or maybe the bird that my house is off. It's um, like two stitches high and I think one or two stitches to the side. Um, I think I can make everything fit. I won't, I don't think however, I'll have room for Jane Hardy up here, which I wasn't planning to put in anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that I'll put anybody's name in there because I already have um, some other small samplers picked out. I need to do one for my great grandmother on my dad's um, dad's side. So my Irish great great grandmother is the grandmother of my grandmother who taught me to stitch. So I want to do her mother and then um, I may or may not do my grandfather's side on my dad's side. But then I also want to do my grandma, at least my grandmother on my mom's side, just do one for my mom who passed away over 30 years ago. And then um, 
actually, yeah. Um, and then, no, it'll be 30 years this October, actually. Um, and then my, um, so my mother and her mother, um, I have, I have a couple picked out and I haven't decided who's going to be whose type thing yet. Um, and then, then I haven't decided who else. Um, I may do some on my, uh, my spouse's family. Um. I have, um, I've got a couple of uh, Can Canadian samplers going and his father's family came, uh, not, not his father, but his grandfather, his father's father, um, came from Canada. So I might, um, I might dedicate one of those to them. Um, okay. So is that all my new starts? No. <laughs> no. I'm starting all the things. Um, okay, those aren't new starts yet. Okay, which one? I, okay, so this one I started. Which did I start next? I started this one next. Okay, so a little over a week ago. Um, the, the Tudor Rose Sampler Guild started another stitch along. This is our, our summer, summer-ish stitch along we're gonna do. Um, so we are doing this Quaker Horn Book by Ellen Chester of With Thy Needle, or With My Needle, With My Needle. Um, and this one um, you have to do as a group. I think if I remember correctly, it says in here somewhere you have to have, or it says on our website, you have to have at least 10 people. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to get 10 friends together and one of you would be the leader and mail everything out to everybody else, you could do that. So, um, let's see. So this one is stitched on 32 count over one, which I think if I could have, found an even weave I liked, I might have done that one, but I'm doing this one, which is 36 count um, over two, except for the alphabet. So um, I just was, um, I'm, I'm um, in the Sarah Rinder group. Uh, you'll see that in my haul. Um, on Facebook, that's another, Hands Across the Sea Sampler. This is like all about samplers, unfortunately. For those of you who aren't really into samplers, my apologies. Um, anyway, <clears throat> um, <laughs> so she does um, tent stitch yeah, for the first leg of a cross, even if she's doing um, a, a full cross for um, over one which I haven't tried before. I mean, I know how to do 10 stitch because I needle point. So 10 stitch comes from needle point. And it, it, uh, it's a different order than I normally stitch a cross stitch. Um, so, although my friend Susan, I think normally stitches that way because I think she needle pointed first and then taught herself a cross stitch and just was stitching like that. Um, so, but, the way the tent stitch goes, it leaves more coverage of the the thread on the back, so you actually use more thread. But um, especially when you're stitching on canvas or Congress cloth, um, it makes a difference um, in how the stitch looks. Uh, it doesn't look as bare because there's there's thread behind it, so to speak. I, I'm not describing it very well, but um, Kathy and I forget her last name. She runs. Needle in a haystack. She owns and runs Needle in a haystack. She posts, you know, she mentioned that um, in the their um, their live, which you can find in the Facebook group. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, so I'm gonna try that on here and see if that works out better for me. Because what happens, um, it doesn't seem to happen as much on even weave. Because maybe because the even weave I stitch I've stitched with in the past is pretty tight, um, but I have the problem of the thread kind of scooting under the the floss thread 
or silk or whatever I'm using sliding under the linen thread and she said it happens less when you use a tenth stitch so I'm going to try that and see if I like that better okay so I haven't shown you what I've done it's been talking away um so I am now why are you in there I have no idea why those colors are in there I must have had something else in here before oh I know I'm going to use this, I only need a little bit of this fabric that I'm using. Um, it's from my stash. I'm not going to say what it is. She doesn't dye anymore. And let's just say I was in a club and I never got the last couple of shipments that I paid for. I'm not going to mention names. Um, okay, let's make sure I got this oriented properly. I started on the bottom. I'm actually stitching it this way upside down because that's the way I stitch. Um, so I'm stitching this on a 36 count linen for my stash that I thought looked pretty close to the picture. And I'm using um, the original or the, she calls for a classic color works. It actually says Crescent Colors because it's old enough to be Crescent Colors. But I'm using Belle Soir Mer Bleu. I don't know if you can, it's, it's kind of a grayish blue. It's coming across a lot dark, excuse me, a lot darker. It's that spaghetti sauce I made for dinner. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so this is the way it actually goes. I'm just, I be stitched upside down sometimes. There, oh, that's better. See that? Right there is, yeah. Right, right there is pretty close to the actual color, at least on my screen. So um, I need to work on that a little bit more. I was gonna work on it on Tuesdays, but this Tuesday I worked on something else. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. Was it was or maybe I worked on Jane Hardy. No, I didn't. <clears throat> so I was debating whether to show this, but I know my spouse does not watch my floss tube, so I think I'm safe. Oh, just nothing in there. This I know because I've got a needle minder in there. Got my Ruth Bader Ginsburg needle minder. Because it, she's pink and there's pink and it works for me. Yes, I'm rather matchy matchy. Yes. So there's this. Um, so the other thing that I'm going to do eventually on that same linen is a Christmas ornament. And so I've got the threads in there from 2016 Christmas just cross stitch Christmas ornament issue. Xmas tea. Oh, anyway. So that's in there to remind me that that's what I also want to stitch on this one. Or I, I may actually end up co-opting it for a small slip here. <clears throat> it is a pretty color. Okay. Okay, I think that's, oh, I haven't shown you my last new start. Okay, so this was the piece that I wasn't sure. Oh, I need to show this one to you on my, so I have this one as a PDF. Okay, so I need to find Stitching with the Housewives. Are full sentences coming out of my mouth? I am not sure. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Sunflower Farm by Stitching with the Housewives. Come on. It's one of their tiered tray tidbits, but I'm not going to do it in a tiered tray. There it is. Sorry for the glare. That's a lot of glare. There. 
Okay, so I'm not doing it on black and I'm not gonna call it Sunflower Farm because as I mentioned, my spouse is a flower farmer and um, his main flower, though he grows others, is sunflowers. So I had this piece of Arctic ice from Mountain Air. It's um, Ada, 14 count, I believe. Um, and so I wanted, um, we have a black Nissan Frontier. So that does not look like a Nissan Frontier, but it's black. So, <laughs> and actually the bumpers are gray, so it works. Um, so I changed the truck to black. I also, um, partly because um, I'm doing it on this sort of teal blue, aqua blue. I'm not sure what you would call that. That's pretty close to real life. Um, the color, at least the DMC version of the classic color works, um, just wasn't the right color. I mean, I had sunflowers sitting in my living room and I was like, mm, that doesn't work for me. And the, the green, that was the DMC was too dark. Um, so I just did my own conversion. And then the other thing, the, the centers of the sunflowers are white on the chart. Okay, I'm a biologist. My husband's a biologist and a flower farmer who grows sunflowers. Sunflowers do not have white centers, just saying. So I had to do mine more like real sunflowers. So I changed the very center of these large sunflowers to 3371 and then I chose a brown, I think it's 898. But anyway, if anybody's interested in my conversion, I can give it to you. Um, I think I am gonna do the lettering in white, um, the 3865 that it calls for. I'm gonna put it in. So I've charted the name of our farm, Oso Bay Farm. Um, <clears throat> it's just a little bit shorter than Sunflower. Um, Oso Bay is a little bit shorter than Sunflower. And then there's like a thing sticking out of the truck that has farm. So um, I'm gonna do that. So all I have left is the you know, the sign that says farm and then Oso Bay and then my initial somewhere. And then I'm going, excuse me, I'm going to put it in this Sudbury House um, trivet. Um, I kind of wish I had a black one, but Judy was selling these before she went out of business at a nice discount. So I bought, and I think the wood ones, either I preferred the wood ones or that was all she had left when I bought them, but... I don't know if this will stand up. It may not. I was kind of hoping it would stand up. <clears throat> if not, I may get them a little easel to put on this table. So if you have. Anyway, this will just fit in here. So this is five by five. The window is five by five. And this is going to end up being four something by four something. Let me see. So on 28 count even weave is going to be four by three. So I'll be pretty close to that. So four wide by three. So just not exactly square, but it'll work, I think. So that's kind of fun. So I played around with some colors there. I pretty much changed all the colors um, except for the white. <coughs> Excuse me again. Okay. It's gonna take me a while to clean up after this. Okay, so those are all my starts. So I did my starts and finishes and finish uh, my starts. And so now, whips. Things I had already started. Um, sort of, I'm gonna try to do these somewhat in order. Okay. So, um, I worked a little bit in late January, and again, sometime, I don't know if this, maybe, maybe I haven't actually worked on this, I thought I did, since my last floss tube. So this is on my, yes, I have worked on it since my last floss tube. 
So Abby Bella Stitch started a, um, what did she call it? ABC Sal or sorry, Stitcher Alphabet Sal. I can't remember. Um, and so I decided to get this back out because there's an alphabet on it. So this is Kitty Cottage Sampler. Um, and I think I've changed some of the colors. I kind of just was using what I had. Um, and I don't remember what I'm stitching this on. Maybe the called for, maybe not. I know I'm stitching it on 32 count. Let's see if I have it in here. Kitty. Oops. I have four months of haul to show you too. This is gonna be a long one. Uh, oh, it's 32 count country French latte. So here it is. So I just I've just been working on the alphabet. And that's gonna be a little mouse face there. I can't remember. I got my conversions written on the chart, I'm sure, but <clears throat> I'm not gonna take the time to get it out of there. So that's coming along. I'm not sure when I'll work on that again, but I should. It's fun. Oops. Okay. Uh, what next? I worked for um, in January, so I'd be after my last floss tube, and maybe in March. Oh. So it looks like. Oh, no, I did work on this in February also. Um, so I tried on the 25th. I normally stitch something Christmassy, um, but I did not in March or April, and I probably won't this month either, but I might. So this is, um, this is my joy by Little House Needleworks, which um, the last one was also Little House Needleworks. I don't think I said that. I'm stitching it on 36 count opulence by Luminous Fiber Arts. And I am using Belle Swa Collard Greens. And that's coming out a little bit brighter than it is in real life, but yeah, so that's what I've got. So, um, I stitched on it a couple of days in January. So I started this, I believe on Christmas day or right around Christmas in December. So I stitched on it for two days in January. And then um, I actually didn't stitch on it on the 25th in February, but the 26th and the 27th, because I think I just, I like blanked on the dates. Loose thread. Um, So if I do Mary 25 stitching this month, I'll either probably work on this or I may instead work on um, Feliz Navidad by Blackbird because I'm getting really close on that one and I haven't worked on it in a long time. Or maybe I'll try to finish it during Christmas in July. Hmm. Okay, and what else did I work on? Oh, I worked a little bit on Uber Snowman. So those of you that return of viewers know that I have stitched several of the Ubers by Bent Creek. And um, I started this one, I forget, 2021, 2020, early 2022, one of those. And um, so I'm stitching this on 20 count, I think this is natural or natural light, I think this is natural light linen with um, DMC pearl cotton number five. And 
let's see, am I using all the called for? I am not. So I'm actually, I switched out, and I think I need to get some more. I do. I'll have to go to I'll get some more. Um, I switched out the white, which is supposed to be Blanc for um, B5200. And then um, pretty much everything else, I'm using the called for um, except, so the, these call for onyx, um, and so do the a couple of the doors down here, and I may instead use the DMC color, at least up here. The variegation, I think, would show more down here, so I might use it, <clears throat> the over dye. I was stitching this in a um, scroll frame. Um, I've been, I had been doing all the Ubers in scroll frame because that's how I started them. Because that's when I was stitching with both hands. But I've started doing this one in hand. I think the other ones, which are a little bit larger, I'll keep doing on the scroll frames when I get done them. And it's about time to get out. Uber flag. <clears throat> I might start working on that one in June. Okay. What do we got here? Oh, yes. This is. Let's see. What did I do with my. I'm going to have to do this one on my phone because I have buried my Kindle somewhere. Ah, here it is. Okay, another Hands Across the Sea sampler. This one was my, maybe that was my Christmas Day start. I don't remember. Either Christmas Day or Boxing Day. I started um, Jane Hopkins. Where are you, Jane? And some of these aren't, their name is <clears throat> way down in, so it's, I think this is it. Yes, Jane Hopkins. Another very colorful sampler. I'm doing an overdye conversion. I have not completed the conversion yet. Um, but this was a, this was a start, I'm pretty sure it was in December, like Christmas Day or the day after Boxing Day. I'm doing this one on doubloon, picture this plus doubloon, probably 40 count, might be 36. And as I said, I'm doing my own overdye conversion. This is what I've got done so far for my conversion. And this is what I've got done so far. So I think when I showed this previously, I only had this part in here done, and I'm trying to remember when I last worked here. Maybe I actually haven't worked on this one. I thought I had. I don't see her. Well, hmm. I didn't need to show this one, but I should work on it some more. It is pretty, it's gonna take me a while. I think part of the reason why I got into the small ones is because um, some of these large ones take me a long time. I'm not the fastest stitcher. Um, let's just say, sometimes I get distracted by, you know, especially if I'm watching floss tube and somebody shows something, then I got to go look for it on, on the internet. Um, so, so I didn't need to show that one. 
But I do need to show this one because I know I've worked on this one. So right after I finished one of the small ones before I went back. So I guess in, in March, maybe. Is that when I got this one out? So this is one... So I showed Dean Hopkins instead of another one, which I should have showed, but I don't have it here upstairs with me. So I'll have to show it next time. I did very little on that other one. So this is, this is one I actually have a hard copy of because that's the only way it was available. So it was, um, and it's ex Esther Blackwood. Um, it was an exclusive for traditional stitches in, is it 2021? Yes, 2021. This is a Canadian sampler. So Esther Blackwood, 1835. It's a Canadian sampler. This is one I'm thinking about personalizing for my spouse's family. I am doing my own Ovidai conversion. I have not completed the conversion. But I have, I got it kitted with the DMCs just in case I wanted to use them. But it's also helpful in terms of um, helping me decide on over dies. So yeah, so I've only converted, I think the first, first month of the stitch along, which is over now. <laughs> so that's what I have so far. And that's what it looks like. So I've mainly been stitching the letters and then this band here and the border, that part of the border. My border is off by like one stitch. I think, I think this part of it, this part's fine. But I think if I remember this part is either down one or up one. I can't remember which. But I decided I was just going to leave it. <clears throat> I've got it written down what I did. I just didn't look it up. So this is Lakeside Vintage Butter Pecan, I think. Yes, butter pecan. They, that's what they kitted it with. Um, they often kit with Lakeside. I'm actually, I ordered Han Hannah Campbell from them. It is on its way here. Um, I just, I just got linen. Um, so I have a bunch of gift certificates from friends from when I left Brownsville um, for Hobby Lobby, and I've been using it to buy floss. <laughs> DMC when I need it. In fact, um, I didn't get them out, but one of my haul for the last four months was going and buying all the um, the newer colors, you know, the zero, whatever, up to 100 and something. Oh, I need to put Esther back in her bag. So that's going to be another slow one, and I'll um, probably just convert it as I go down the sample. Um, okay, so that is all my starts, finishes, finishes, new starts, finishes. Um, so I had a bunch of starts and finishes. Um, and then the, the few whips that I worked on. So mainly I've been working on new starts. Um, the, as I said, those small samplers. So I have a bit of haul. Um, so one thing is I got some Vicki Clayton. Got a bunch of the Red Work Red because it was only going to be available for a short time. This is a variegated. So this is the one that I used for um, Florence Law. And I'm sure I will be stitching other red samplers with it. Then um, I wasn't sure what green I wanted for Elizabeth Garage, so I bought several greens. So this one is lime marmalade, so a lot lighter. It's hard to tell on a screen. Um, Numb undone green. 
than a lighter green. Loblolly, which is, it's more of a, it's a bluer green than the one that I chose, which is Flapper Effect, which is this one here. So I may, um, and then I decided when I bought these, I got a couple other reds just for yucks. Um, so this one is... Quite the cash. Cash, not catch. Cash as in, you know, a cash of floss. <laughs> so these are silks, actually. Um, and this one is Scarlet Fever. So just a couple of different reds. I may use um, Loblolly and one of these reds. Maybe Scarlet Fever or Red, red Work Red for um, one of the red and green hat samplers. I can't remember which, oh, forget the name of it. I have it, have the PDF. And then um, some other flosses I got. Let me just show some flosses before I show other stuff. So some other flosses I got. So this was from Market. I didn't really get much at Market or from Market, but um, I wanted to get the, I wanted to try these Treadway silks, um, and um, they had a tea time stitch along thing. I also got some of the patterns. Um, I think the ones that I've bought so far are all got a PDF, so I'm not going to show them today because um, I don't remember where I stuck them. But um, this is the tea time palette. And I'm a sucker for anything with teapots or teacups. So um, I got these from Abby Topknot. She was very good as soon as they were available. She shipped them to me. I will probably order some more stuff from her. Probably some of the um, some of the patterns that aren't available as PDF. And then um, okay. Oh, no, I have some other floss. So, um, Fat Quarter Shop is doing their stitch along and quilt along. So, I decided um, to do the quilt along, and I wasn't sure if I was going to do the stitch along, but the colors are so pretty. So, I got the whole floss kit. So, it's, it's all classic color works. So, it's Sunset Shrimp Cocktail. I'm not going to pull them out of here because it will take me forever to get them back. Um, cobbled peach goldfish, Tahiti orange, which really looks more like a yellow, um, crushed pineapple, frozen margarita, fancy green Nancy, Betty Bluebell, deep blue sea, mermaid's fin, and snowball. So um, I haven't started stitching. I've decided um, I'm going to wait um, until all the patterns are released I figured out I'm and I figured this out a long time ago for knitting patterns <laughs> but it's taken me a little bit longer to figure it out for cross stitch patterns I really don't like mysteries I prefer to see the whole pattern and then decide am I going to start in a corner in the middle where am I going to start and for this one you know we've already seen the whole thing we just don't have the charts yet and um I really want to start in the middle for that one because border, okay, borders are not my favorite thing. I'm just going to say that. Um, and I really don't, like, the way they had you do is, like, you're supposed to stitch the whole border first. I never stitch the whole border first, ever. I think the closest I came was on um, personal is political. I started putting in the border. I got some of it done and then started working on some of the stuff inside and then just decided to do the rest of the border. But that was small. Um, I kind of I kind of like doing a little border and then a little, mo you know, motifs because then you can help that check yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, and yeah, so that's what I tend to do. Um, okay, so those are, I think that's all the flosses. Um, Okay, so these are in no particular order. So, um, so 
so I can't remember if I showed these last time because I don't remember when I ordered these. I got, I know I got these from Fat Quarter Shop. This is Be My Valentine. Um, these are both stitching with the housewives and roses are red. And I do have some black even weave or linen, I can't remember which, that I probably will use for these. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna use the um, Classic Color Works or DMC. I might probably will end up doing a mixture depending on what I have. Okay. Then I think I've got, yes, I got this from the Silver Needle um, from their New Year's Eve day sale. Um, and I don't think it came before, because it takes them a while. I ordered sort of later in the day because I forgot. So I just ordered a couple things. If I order first thing in the morning, I tend to order more because you get more off. Um, but that's their big sale. Um, and then I didn't order, they usually do a Super Bowl sale and I didn't order anything on the Super Bowl sale. Um, I ordered also Cardinal Kin, but they were out by the time they got to my order. Um, but anyway, so this is Home for the Holidays by Blackbird Designs. Um, my favorite design in here is this one, but I already had it um, in um, one of their other books. Joyeux Noel, maybe? I can't remember the name of the book, but this one was also in that book. But um, but there's some pretty ones in this one, too, that I don't have, so I didn't have. Yeah, so this one I had, or this is part of a motif. It's a motif of one that I have. And then I think it's probably my spouse telling me he's <clears throat> heading home. Oh, this is why I got this one. I told a lie. So this is really my favorite. So I do, I want to stitch this one. But I need to finish Feliz Navidad first. Okay, so I'm just going to put these behind me. Um, oh, this was exciting. So last year, those of you that are Return, returning viewers might recall that I was in Lindy Stitch's Bird Crush, Bird Crush Club, but I wasn't able to get, I missed um, getting in at the beginning. I forget why. I think I just waited too long. And then I couldn't, I wasn't able to get in in February. I couldn't get in until March. So I missed the first two. So I was finally able, she's re, she's releasing them, and I was finally able to get in. So um, earlier, and I may, I don't think I ordered, no. So Stellar's J was the very first one, and I wasn't able to get the floss. She was out of the floss, which is actually this green here. Um, so I may either try to get it someplace else or try to get it from her another time. And then this was both of these I really wanted. Black Bellied Whistling Duck is one I just got recently. And for this one, I was able to get the, the special floss, which I'm pretty sure goes on their breasts. But we've got these guys around here. They're sometimes in our pond out there. And um, I used to see them all the time outside my place in Brownsville. So, um, so here they are. Black Billy Whistling Duck, they're so cute. And they make the cutest noise. And then there was, there was a freebie in here. Oh, yes. A Lindy's, Lindy Mini. So this is before the ball. It's a little mouse with a spool. How cute. And there was a, um, she sent me a freebie in the other one too. I really don't need to put these back. And I think I need to find the one I have the other ones in. So this is Love and Prickles, a little porcupine. So cute. And she's been putting little drawings on my, oops. So I think this was a freebie that came with, um, the Silver Needle one by Silver Creek. 
kindness always matters. Okay. Um, and then <clears throat> I decided to join the Caterpillar Club. Um, I have since, so I got this first one. And, oh, there's no picture. Oh, I know. I have already determined. There's something of a picture. I might have it here. Um, what's this thing called? So it was a Barbara Anna. And those of you... Posy. I may not have put this in here yet. Nope. Well, I can't actually show it to you. Let me see. Because um, the pattern doesn't have a picture. It just has the pattern. Um, okay. Barbara Anna. Let's see if she... I can't remember if she put a copy on... She put a picture. I think she did put a picture. I thought I had determined that she did put a picture on her Insta. Oh, here it is. And I thought I had kept a picture, but so that's it right there. It's like kitty down here and flowers coming out of the kitty's head. I love the colors and it's Barbara Anna who I love. So I decided, and there were cookies in here too. So this came all the way from England. So it, it's a whole kit. Um, I may or may not use the Ada. I've got some cream um, 32 count linen that I might use instead. And then um, the floss is very nicely packaged. I am getting this next one, um, but I decided to cancel um, because like I said I really I really don't like mysteries <laughs> so this one I got only because it was Barbara Anna um, and I can't remember what the so it's it's an every other month club um, I love their needle minders too they're nice and substantial shall we say um, Okay, let's see. What else we got here? I can't remember if I showed this on my last floss tube, and I was going to watch the end of it to see if I showed it, but I'm pretty sure this came after. So, um, or maybe not. So this is Lucy Barber. So I got the kit. This one they kitted up with. Oh, so I got the Frippery. Um, I was going to convert this to over dye, but I think, I think my brain power is not there. So I did order the DMC, so I would get the frippery. Um, I'm trying to remember what the... Okay, so this is actually, um, yes, it's right on here. This is 40 Count Wood Smoke by Tabby Cat. So this one isn't really grungy like some of them are that people are complaining about. I actually kind of like the modeling on um, Overdyes. But um, anyway, so this is another sal. So this was also exclusive through Traditional Stitches. Um, I always feel like I'm stealing when I order from Canada because... <laughs> The um, exchange rate is heavily in our favor at the moment, U.S. favor. <coughs> it can be 20, it's like getting a 25 to 30 percent discount depending on the exact rate on the day that you order or the day that you pay. Um, okay, so there's that one. And then um, I did the mentioned Sarah Rinder. So this is um, exclusive for Needle and Haystack for their 25th. I should have taken it out of the, sorry about that. I think you, a lot of people have shown this already. Let me 
just the bird bath is so pretty. I think I may have mentioned I, I ordered Hannah Campbell from Traditional Stitches. I thought about getting um, the DMC. Um, I really like a Verisois 103, um, but I just um, I haven't wanted to spend them that that kind of money lately. And some of these have a lot of colors. Um, so I got the Vintage Maple Sugar Lakeside. I, usually if there's a choice for Lakeside, I get it. Um, and then I got, for this one, I got the DMC so I could get the frippery. And I thought about doing the same for Hannah Campbell, but um, I decided not to because I had all those gift certificates. And if I'd known I was going to get all those, that gift certificate, I would not, probably wouldn't have got this either. But, but yeah, so... Here's the frippery for this one. They are pretty fripperies. Um, so this one, I think I said vintage maple sugar. And then for um, for Hannah Campbell, I got whatever the the lakeside. The, I can't remember if I ordered the 36 count or the 40. Whatever lakeside they were kidding with. I, I got that's when there's a chance to get lakeside and I also ordered some other lakeside but they were out of it um, I think it was light exemplar vintage light exemplar um, and they were out of it so they they're getting me some but they said it might be five months which is fine um, I, I only ordered it because I thought it might be in stock then just recently um, Julie of reflection stitching and framing um, who does the um, she has a floss tube um, and she does the she used to do during the heart of the pandemic she was doing the chart of the day um, not always daily but often and then she finally started doing chart of the week and she's trying to get back into doing that she she moved her, sh her shop and everything anyway she showed Seaside Tiny Town. And since I live by the seaside, and I do love Heart and Hand, although I have not done any of the tiny towns, I haven't collected any of them yet. Um, I, although I do like um, Helen D, um, East Coast Crafter on Instagram, and Helen D on, on YouTube. Um, she had shown some of the other tiny towns. Anyway, she had talked about this one and I'd seen it, but nobody had it yet. And Julie had it. And um, so I ordered this one. And then I've been wanting to get Honey of a Tiny Town. So I got that. And then um, <clears throat> um, these gals, my sister Sampler, and I forget their name. Um, anyway. One or both of them are in Tudor Rose. Um, they, um, so my sister sampler, I really wanted to do this one um, because this is done with Vicki Clayton hand dyed fiber silk. Um, and I'm, I haven't ordered it yet. Um, and I'm gonna order the floss pack or the silk pack for this from Vicki. Um, I just haven't decided what I'm gonna stitch it on. I may do it on ballet slippers. I have a boatload of ballet slippers by Fox and Rabbit. I got it from Fat Quarter Shop and you have to get a whole yard. Bummer, huh? Um, but it's on X Jude Designs. Little bunny, 36 count. I don't know, I haven't decided. I don't have any, or I, I do, have, the only X, G, I don't know if it's X Jude or X J U designs. Um, the only, I think the only thing I have for her is part of a kit. Okay, so I do have one more new thing to show. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about plans. And this is already over an hour, which you probably guessed since it was gonna happen because it's been that long. Um, so, Honey Fair. I love B-Skeps. 
So when Helen D was showing this and said they're gonna do a sale, I was like, I want it, I want to, I want to be part of it. Um, of course, Helen's already done. Probably, pretty much most people in sale have already done, and I haven't even started because um, I I just finally got this. I ordered this from One Through Three Stitch. We're actually now here in Texas, so they're kind of like my local needlework store. So I am doing it on a little piece of ballet slipper. And I pulled um, the DMC and the overdies that I had. Um, although one of them I didn't have, but I subbed um, a limited edition um, general arts that I had in my stash. So. I'm thinking I'm gonna use these um, we'll see how it goes oh I may do one sub so that's actually molasses Luke Styworks molasses I think that is too which is a dark dark brown um, and the DMC conversion is 3031, which is definitely brown. Um, well, in the picture, it looks black to me. And plus, okay, a B. They're black. <laughs> so, black and yellow. Um, so, I'm probably going to use 310 instead. We'll see. And... This is the thread bed I'm going to use. So I was going to start this this month. However, if you watch Colorado Cross Stitcher, you know she does summer camp. And oh, and I forgot to say this is by this is by October House Fiber Arts. So this is not the first October House Fiber Arts that I've purchased several years ago, pre-pandemic, I purchased these two. Knitter sampler, a knitter sampler and sock knitter, or call, socks on the line. Um, have I stitched these yet? No. Um, so, um, she does each month, there's a theme. So, for August, it's do something new a new designer, a new, like a new finish you've never done before, something new. Um, and since I've been wanting to try something by these guys, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wait and do this in August. Because besides this, this says summer to me rather than spring. Um, so, so that's August. And um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do for July. July is supposed to be something that grows. So, you know, it could be an animal, plant, whatever. Um, I have lots of options. <laughs> um, it'll probably be a sampler, maybe a small sampler. I'm, I'm still thinking about it. But, <clears throat> um, and I was... I hemmed and hawed about June, which is supposed to be something with a bird in it. Um, now, I'm going to be doing some traveling, so I want to stitch on something that's easy to see, even if the light where I'm at isn't the best. So, although I was seriously considering doing a small hat sampler, um, I'm not absolutely certain I will have... Um, Jane Hardy done by the end of the month. So I decided I'm going, since I bought this whole kit from Pigeon Coop back in um, late last year, um, you know, it's a full kit um, and it's on Ada and it's a bird. <laughs> so it's on oatmeal. 14 count Ada, which would be easy for me to see, even if the light's not the best. Um, okay, and the, you know, the floss comes like this. 
So you get what you need. I think I just lost my needle. Yep, it went on the floor, so I'm gonna have to remember to put a needle in here. Um, because it's probably under the bed, because I'm sitting on the bed. Anyway, so this is coming with me on my travels, and um, and I'm gonna work on this for summer camp. So, so I need to take a picture. Um, so I'm ready to post it on the first. I'm not sure I'll be able to start on the first. I'm gonna be a little bit busy. I'm gonna be at my 40th college reunion. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. And um, like I said, I haven't quite decided about July. Still thinking about that one. Might might be a flowery sample sampler. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll even work on. Let me do this one. Hmm, because there's a nice flower in the middle and some other flowers. Anyway, not sure. <laughs> um, I might just do another bird. I was thinking about doing um, the gathering, the, the gathering, um, like gathering strawberries, which has birds on it from Luminous Fiber Arts, and then maybe in July doing gathering clover, which obviously clover's a plant; it grows. Um, so anyway, haven't quite decided what I'm going to do about that, um, but um, we're getting to almost an hour and a half here. Um, I seem to do movies when I do these. Um, I really, my plan, this is my plan, um, is when, so the, the Thursday night market that my husband's doing tonight, he only does once a month. And I try to film about once a month. So I was thinking um, I would maybe film on Thursday nights once a month so it'll be the third Thursday um we'll see how that works out I may he also does a Wednesday night market so depending on what else is going on I may have to do a Wednesday night but I'm hoping that, that will work out a little bit better than trying to do weekends we shall see um anyway I'm glad I did this um oh I was going to talk about birds Warblers right now are migrating. Um, a lot of them have gone through already, but today we got to see a Cape, no, Canada warbler and a um, black and white warbler right in our yard. So that was pretty cool. Um, anyway, <clears throat> um, I was gonna talk more about the migrating birds, but by the time I'm done here, we're gonna be an hour and a half and because we're almost there. So I think I'm gonna sign off and um, I said, as I was saying and interrupted myself, I'm glad I did this and I'm going to try to be better about um, doing this at least once a month. I do still want to do a whip parade. Um, I'm going to do my magic list, um, do parade of my magic list list. Um, I had them all organized and then life happened. I'll just say that life happened. You don't need to hear the whole saga, um, but it ended with the whole COVID thing. Oh, and then the spouse got it. And can I just say, he is the worst patient. That's... <laughs> anyway, I hope you all are doing well and I hope you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on. I actually worked on more things than I thought, probably because of all those small samplers that I've been starting. <laughs> Um, and we'll see if I carry on trying to do one a month. Um, we'll see. Um, cause I also want to do some quilting and some knitting and some spinning and some weaving. Um, so that might take up my time anyway. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for, um, for watching. I hope you come back. Um, if you haven't, it would be nice if you subscribed, um, I had gotten up over 300 and I'm back under 300 again, probably because I haven't posted a video in five months. That, that might do it. Anyway, thanks again. Um, please, um, <clears throat> excuse me, please be kind to yourself and be kind to your neighbor. Bye-bye.